give us a kind of an opening statement of just uh, where things stand right now as you start practicing for 2020? Yeah, you know, we've been going since January the 8th, but whenever you're in small groups, it's just not the same. And, you know, it's, it's been a little rainy on the loveliest village on the plains for a couple of weeks. and But we got some arms in shape and we're timing with our batters and fielding and getting back into the swing of things. And then all of a sudden, about two hours ago here on this first full team practice, the sun broke and it's, we got a beautiful day for this first day. And I think we're all excited to, you know, we'll get 12 squad games starting today leading up to, to opening day. And um, we need every one of them. And looks like we're going to have a chance to get off to a good start today. Just depth, pitching staff, how important is that in these 12 squad games to kind of start to figure out kind of how things will shake out? Yeah, um, just keeping them on their days, um, getting a look at everybody. You know, they're still, just like last year with 18 new players, this team has 18 new players. So we have so much back, and we have the most depth we've ever had on our pitching staff back. But, uh, you know, you can play great in the fall or great last season, and there's no guarantee for this year. Um, but we got some guys that have a ton of experience that we hang our hat on, and they've all performed great and uh, are doing things to, to get ready. But there's a lot of guys that you just need to keep developing gamesmanship with that we think are going to be big pieces. And being able to handle, handle a Tanner Burns and a Cody Greenhill and a Jack Owen and a Bailey Horn and a Richard Fitz, if some of these new pieces can show that they're ready, it's going to really help us early in the season to give some other guys opportunities to keep building them up where they're strong for, you know, SEC play the middle of the year and hopefully at the end. How's the health of your team going into the start practice? Yeah, I think we're good. Um, I think we've done a good job over the break. Um, you know, Jack, Tanner, uh, Cody, the well-documented guys didn't throw as much this fall, and I think um, that's proven to be beneficial for us. I think they all came back on January the 8th at the same starting point as everyone else. So it's been positive. They've been able to build to that 50, 60 pitches, and we're going to try to get them a couple innings here first day. And um, if we get through this first weekend and they continue to be able to build pitch counts, I would think uh, we're good. Positional player-wise, um, I think everybody that's expected to be on the roster is um, full speed and, and ready to go as of this first practice. You have a lot of uh, returning starters in, in the positions. That other spots up for grabs. It'll, how long will that con competition go? Yeah, it, w it was fun in the fall. You know, really, you know, with the seven of the nine position players returning, um, it really went to the point of left side infield with losing Will Holland and Edward Julian. It's like, who's going to play the left side? And we've been deliberate about putting Ryan Bliss over there, knowing that at any point in time he could go to second base and and be great. You know, that's. That freshman, Ryan Bliss, was the only player that I think started every single the game of the 2019 season. So, um, but putting him at shortstop, it, it might be twofold or threefold reasons why. Does it get another player in the lineup? Uh, you know, it's one thing to feel set on defense, which I'm, <laughs> I'm inclined to be more in favor of that being a pitching guy. It's pitching and defense, and and. Um, but putting a lineup together, can we find a blend where we can get another player in the lineup? So Ryan Bliss defensively is really important. If he can play short, it may give us some options. Um, if Connor Davis can can stay on the field at first base because he's been a DH for a lot of his career, um, we really feel like we're solidified in the outfield with, with Judd and Kaysen Howell and Stephen Williams. Everybody remembers last year that was kind of the three out there every single day. Uh, some depth for Matt Scheffler. Can we – can uh, Nathan LaRue or uh, Ryan Dial, two freshman catchers we're so excited about, can, can they spell um, Sheffer behind the plate a game or two a week? Because that would only keep somebody bigger, stronger, faster. I thought we asked Matt to catch a lot last year. So you talk, start talking about ways to make our team better from a defensive standpoint. It's where we're going to put Ryan Bliss because we all know he's going to be in there. Um, can Connor Davis get on that? get on that field and hold down first base to allow us some options and some player development from a DH role of getting at bats for other players. And can can one of these freshmen that we're so excited about at, at catcher, can they uh, allow us to keep Matt Sheffer being at the top of his game and, and peak physical um, form as we go through the season? Those are the things that kind of scream out. But most of these, we have some flexibility with guys moving around. Brody Moore probably is the super utility guy that could play third, short, second, first in each corner outfield. Um, 
he's a pretty valuable piece to our defense. Uh, but for the most part, most of these guys are starting to settle in. If, if you put Connor Davis at first base, I guess the other thing to mention is uh, Rankin Wally's played a ton of third base. Will he be able to get there and stay there? It looks like he will be able to. And um, we have some other good guys that are that are capable there. But getting all this experience on the field at one time and is uh, kind of the goal. But uh, what sort of went into the Tim Hudson hire and how is he did it so far? <laughs> it went into Captain Obvious mode. We're like, uh, we're you know, really for, for Steve and Melinda Smith uh, to give us two years and to be part of a Super Regional on a trip to Omaha, uh, back-to-back years, huge success. Baylor's all-time winning as head coach. He comes and serves and connects with our program um, and just did a great job leading our pitching staff for two years. So I was so excited for him to get that opportunity. I think it's a great fit and a great match, and he gets to return what he's done the majority of his career, and that's be a – a Division One head baseball coach, so we feel great about that, and uh, wish Steve and Melinda all the best. And then, you know, there's this gaping hole of like the timing of the year, a December, and what are you going to do? And I just think that the timing was perfect. And I just think from my connection of reaching out to Tim, I just think it's a perfect time. He's five plus years now from his playing career. Um, I'm not sure this would have been a fit two, three years ago. Uh, so I think where he's at in life with the daughter starting at Auburn and then being here for over a decade in Auburn and he's got a boy and his kids are now in high school and, and starting all that piece, uh, I think this is the right purpose and the right time for him to connect because what I have learned in a short period of time, Tim Hudson's not going to do anything part-time or half-hearted. And uh, so I think for Tim personally, he's got so much to give. And then for Auburn baseball, uh, you know, I'm here to help in any way that I can, although I, I want to make it clear that Tim's our guy and has complete ownership, and I want him to. Um, but, you know, being a pitching coach in the Southeastern Conference for 16 years, I'm here to help him in any way. He's got the prong of Dr. Andrews and the medical staff, which I think second to none nationally. That's another good prong. Um, Anthony Sanderson's under that umbrella is one of the well, most well thought of trainers. Um, in our league, in the country. Um, Chris Joyner, our strength conditioning coach, was eight-year major league strength conditioning coach. And then Blake Logan, who played here and now has his master's and now is kind of the this data-driven analytics that baseball is all going full force behind, is there as another prong. I just – I think adding somebody with 222 major league wins, adding somebody that's thrown game seven of a World Series and won a World Series and – um, somebody with his experience um, adds the last piece of the prong that makes our Auburn pitching development plan about as good as anybody's got in America. And I, I think, you know, we kind of carry about 60 plus years of major, major league or professional experience within this staff. And so, as you can tell, I'm excited and want to lay it out there um, that Tim Hudson is a, is a huge, maybe, um, defining piece to make the prongs of this pitch and development uh, second to none.